Hello again. Happy New Year to everyone. Hope everybody is well. Figure I'd go into a little bit more depth of these hoverboards. Had a few people asking some questions about these. And I have one here. Everyone's a little different, but the fundamentals are pretty much the same. Some have aluminum frames, and this one here is a plastic frame. The batteries these come with are fairly decent. 18650 batteries is normally what they are. The battery packs come in multiple configurations. Some have more, some have less. Depends on the voltage that they run at. This battery was out of another hoverboard. You can see they're a little different. This here is the electronic speed control for the motor. This is a brushless motor, so it runs on three phase and has a hull effect sensor that orients the wheel so it knows its position. These are won't be used anymore because of what we're doing with this. The board's no longer needed to make it turn into a generator. Here I'm removing the speed control. These are real similar to radio controlled vehicle speed controls for brushless motors. And I've actually tried to see if it would work and you can actually run these hoverboard wheels with a RC brushless motor speed control. Here I'm showing how you can take the halves of the hoverboard apart. There's a snap ring. You just need some snap ring pliers. This is the other half of the board, which is basically a mirror image. They communicate to each other, the boards do. The battery is usually only on one side. And once you dislocate that snap ring, it just slides apart, just like this. Usually any extra wires go to like a LED light. And these are what control the speed on the boards. These wires right here on this little plug all together I'll show you what you can do with these later in the video, but for now, if you just want to be most efficient in generating power, you won't use those. And each one of these legs that I'm cutting here are your three legs that are for your three phase. Those three wires are going to go to your three phase rectifier, which is right here. The other side, it isn't labeled, but at positive and negative on this type of rectifier, is so I figured I'd show that it doesn't matter what your phases are you just hook up your three phases to that side of the rectifier and these are the connectors I bought to go on these rectifiers but it ended up turning out that they were too narrow for this wide blade as you can see so I ended up just trimming the blades to fit these connectors because I had them on hand. Also with these spade connectors, I was able to push them on and you can actually pull the covers right off of them, which makes it way better to solder them to the wires once you connect them. So I went through here and just trimmed the rest of these. So here I strip these three wires for the connectors.
And right here, you wanna make sure you put your covers on before you put your connectors on and solder them. And when you solder it, you wanna make sure you solder it right at where the wire comes through the connector so the cover can come over the connector and not be obstructed and not be able to get your cover all the way on. I didn't solder these because I have other plans in this video to show you what other things you can do. So these are just on here temporarily. And here's the rectifiers on Amazon. And just about any three phase rectifier would work as long as the voltage rating is high enough. These motors can produce up to about 60 volts each. It's really close, depends how fast you spin them. But this is a demonstration of showing you that it's putting out, you know, three to six volts, me spinning this by hand. The direction of the wheel also doesn't matter because it's rectifying it. It's not worried about what rotation it is. It'll still produce the positive and negative voltage. And here I am going to break down the motor and actually show you what's inside these. And after removing the screws, you just gently pry on this and, and it'll come up. You don't want to pry too much on one end of it. And here's a look at the inside of these hub motors. And you can see where the magnets, the permanent magnets are on the outside. And they're pretty close to each other. There's not much space in between the, the rotor and the wheel. Here is the bearing cradle. This is what keeps everything in alignment on the hoverboard wheel. And you can actually remove this interstater from the wheel. It takes a little bit of force though. And I believe these are the hull effect sensors. And you can see the inside of the hub here. And those are the permanent magnets. You can see that you can see through that with these LEDs. They light up the hub wheel. And I'm going to show you how you can wire this to where when you're generating energy, you know, at a certain rate of speed. It will actually light up these LEDs. As you can see here, these wires, the three phase wires that you use, you're gonna find this connector and you're gonna take the color coordinated wire 
and you're going to end up cutting these off and connecting them to together. So you got green, you look for the small green, you look for the small blue, and you look for the small yellow. These wires are pretty small, so it's easier just to strip them by heating up the plastic and pulling them off. It's smaller than my stripper will do, and it works. And the rest of these wires here, I usually just twist them up and tie them in a little knot and just set them off to the side. We'll probably never use these wires. And if you decide to run the LEDs, this would be the time when you're gonna go ahead and solder all your connections together. It doesn't matter what order you plug the connectors in. Here I'm going to spin the wheel up and show you that the light will come on once you reach enough speed. Here I'm showing you that you don't need the rectifier or anything for the LEDs to work and it show you it start generating power. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you and have a good one.